Welcome to GN Talks. Uh, we are continuing the series on the Carlsbad pawn structure. Uh, this time it's Plans for White Part 4. I can recommend uh, watching the other three parts before you watch this one, uh, but this can also stand alone. Uh, and today we will look at when White opens the center with e3, e4. Uh, and you could say that this is not really a plan. It's more of an option, that it's an option sometimes. Uh, it's smart for white to open the center with black is behind in development or black's pieces are placed in clumsy uh, situations or things like that. In, in general, white does not want to play e3, e4 because he's saddled with an isolated queen pawn on the square d4. Anyway, we're going to watch uh, see a game here by Anatoly Karpov. Anatoly Karpov is a great player to, to, to learn from, so I will use him often in DM Talks, as you probably already noticed, if you are a regular viewer. Anyway, let's get going. He's playing against Yusupov. It's Moscow 1988, uh, and Karpov starts with the English opening c4, e6, and we are transposing into the... Uh, Queen's Gambit declined. And here uh, Yusupov uh, plays bishop e7, and that's sort of a, a refinement on, on playing knight f6, because he doesn't want the pure to play against the pure uh, exchange variation, as we have seen in the earlier games, where after knight f6, white takes on d5 and plays bishop d5, and has very smooth development. As we have uh, mentioned earlier, we will, we will look more in depth on and this variation in particular. But to be honest, this structure is important for all players because it can arise from a very variety of uh, different opening lines, including uh, the Semislav, the Ragosin, the Queen, uh, Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, uh, I think the Nimsu Indian, Greenfield, and of course the exchange variation in the Karakan. Uh, the bishop e7 is to avoid this line. Um, White can take and play bishop f4, or he can play like he does here. This is not considered as critical because after c6, if White was to go e3 here, um, let's see it. Uh, this is considered not so typical because. Black is allowed to play bishop f5 and getting this bishop out here. And according to theory, black has already equalized when he gets his bishop here on f5. Uh, he has uh, smooth development. Uh, there's no problem with this piece. And, and as we have seen in some earlier videos, in a lot of opening lines, white's plan is simply to make this bishop, the white squared bishop, uh, homeless all over the board, so it ha cannot find a suitable spot. And, but here it's already fine, a uh, great place, and it's there's probably nothing better for white than to exchange this uh, bishop, and then black definitely only have good pieces. So in, to avoid this, white plays queen c2, um, taking control of the, of the square, uh, and, and this is part of the plan. If black just castle and, and white goes e3 and bishop d3, we will have the main line. And, and we, we have seen earlier that Karpov is a great connoisseur of this line. Uh, but uh, Yusupov will have nothing of this. He's playing the most critical line. Anyway, this specific position is very uh, critical for players who play the Semislav because often uh, they will get this uh, when white tries to transpose into the exchange variation from the Semislav, they will get this position and, uh, and this move is good. Uh, the idea is, is simply white wants to play bishop f5. If uh, black goes e3, bishop f5, it is known that, that uh, black has already equalized. I think we have seen this in the game uh, Bobotsov Petrosian in another Karlsbad video. Anyway, let's go on. e4. And this is the plan, and here it's very early. I might say that e4 is always something that you should be aware of with black and white. Always be aware of e2 or e3 to e4. Uh, because this is, uh, is, a, is, a, is an option that white have in a lot of different situations. Uh, what happens after take, now black actually takes with the knight. But when these two pawns here, we put them with red, they disappear. Uh, white will have very free uh, peace play. 
with the pieces, as we can see that when they're on an open board, and he will, but he will also have an isolated queen pawn. And this can be weak if there are a lot of pieces exchanged and black is able to block it, he will probably later win it and might win the end game. Uh, so, so white has to, to keep the activity going when he's playing e4. But sometimes it's just played so white can actually blast black off the board after e4. Anyway, he plays knight takes e4. And this is all known from theory. And bishop takes e7. And here, black has to be uh, very, very uh, careful uh, because there is a, is a trap in the position. If he were to take here on e7 with the queen, there is a big problem for him coming up. Boom! And it's hurting here on b7. And if the queen moves, um, it, the, the knight is lost. And it kind of goes to e6 because of the knight e7. So if something like this then comes here. Or sometimes you can even take here because there's a, there's a, oh, there's no, ooh, there is definitely no, no check there because it's check. Anyway, um, so he has to play here king takes and, and check. And uh, so we have the king in an open board, but it will find uh, probably find shelter on the king side. Uh, white has a lead in development. For sure, black has not developed any pieces <laughs> except his king. Uh, but white also have um, this guy here that will turn out weak. For instance, if black was able to transfer this guy up here, uh, then he, he will be, be probably already uh, have control over the whole game because nothing much is happening. Also, black has some weaknesses on the dark square, but nothing uh, not, nothing too worrying. Okay, uh, the best move for black here, uh, according to theory, and it's, a, it's supposed to equalize rather easily, is uh, king f8. And uh, just to play queen f6, king g7, bishop e6, knight around, and so on. And 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 even white has a slight initiative in the beginning, but it will uh, fizzle out, and black is okay. Instead, uh, but but this was not known at the time, I think. So so Yusufov played bishop e6, which looks very normal. Uh, just getting ready to queen d5 and or king f8 and, and developing a piece and how bad can it be? But the, the problem is uh, the, the pin here is a bit annoying uh, and, and you might be settled with a weak pawn on this square and this is something you don't want with your king sailing around in the center. So it's, it's supposed to be more or less equal but white is uh, probably slightly better here. Um, and th this was uh, in 1988 and Ka Karpov had lost his uh, world championship title three years earlier but, and he was hungry and he was developing and he was getting better uh, and he was probably at, at the, uh, some of the best playing he ever did it was in 1993 and this is 1988 but he was he was definitely better than when he was a world champion. Uh, so Yusupov was up against a giant here and, uh, and the giant really played well. So let's see the game. Um, the, the, the thing to notice is this structure can arise a lot of the time. It's always white that chooses it, and, and he should be careful that if he, he does so, he gets an initiative. Uh, but it's an always an, an interesting option, just playing maybe rook e1 and e4 in, in a lot of sort of standard situation can be a problem for black, and it's not so easy to defend. Okay, we, see, we, we go on with the game. And uh, trying to exchange, uh, White will have nothing of that. Uh, of course, uh, the the ending is is nothing, um, and and all these moves are very normal. And here comes a very strong move um, because Karpov senses that this is not about. Uh, he's not black is not going to melt down here, but he does have this king. Oh, we will make that red, so like this. He does have the king, who is in a difficult spot. Yeah, of course, white is always also having a, a king here that makes this rook not able to move. And, and probably the knight and the bishop and the rook and the queen is not enough to overcome black, uh, who's fighting with all his pieces, even though this rook at the moment is not really participating. Um, so he comes up with a strong move, 
like the transformation of advantages and Karpov was a master of this. This is something we will look into uh, in, in, a, in, in a lot of later videos, uh, how uh, you, you demand an exchange commission whenever you change something when you're better. And here why does exactly that. He changes uh, his, his lead in development into some kind of concrete attack. Opening lines um, and getting uh, after this, the bishop comes in here with a, a nasty pin. Uh, the knight has gotten this square, the queen has gotten this square, the queen has also gotten this square, and this pawn down here is hanging. And we see that the king here, if it was on g7, black will probably be okay here, but it's standing on e7 and it will not be easy to, to, to find a good space. a6, uh, avoiding losing a pawn, uh, trying to solve the pin immediately, comes a check and king here. This was not part of taking on e7 with the king. The plan was of course to, to walk all the way to g7. And, uh, and black is is already uh, very annoyed, and and Karpov doesn't uh, doesn't mind giving checks here and there and saying, okay, uh, we've harassed you a little bit, let's harass the queen a little bit more. Uh, and he's he's of course looking to um, queen h5, and here we see that black has problems getting his pieces uh, to to good squares. Um, and, but white also have a problem. He wants to have the knight coming in, he wants to have his, his rook out, and here comes a strong move, h4. Limiting the mobility of the queen somewhat, uh, and making this square available. Notice that due to the pin here, there is no queen g4 or something like that. You just take it. So queen g8, and here comes knight g5, um, already threatening something like maybe rook e6. Ah, there's a check here, so we should be careful. But um, but it could be sometimes, and, and, and uh, this could come with a, with a nasty pin. Rook h8, he defends against it, comes another uh, nice little move, putting the queen uh, back in to uh, where it doesn't want to belong. And we see that black's position is, is basically a total mess at the moment. And, and it's just a question of how uh, white is going to uh, to get this uh, attack uh, getting through. And Kapo will be very careful to 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 get enough out of it, not exchange into some ending that's slightly better. He wants more uh, in positions like this because with the king here, black should not be able to survive. Rook e7, queen b4. There is an x-ray down here, and there's also a threat here. Knight f6, de defending here. Oops, oops, that was not part of uh, the moves we wanted to play. Uh, um, we wanted to show the... This was defended. Yes, check. Rook d7, queen f4, threatening. Hitting... Hitting this guy, and uh, well, he's also hitting here. And notice that if he goes queen d7, rook takes e6 is is a problem. So black is really a mess here. Here comes another great move, bishop d4 with the uh, x-ray here, and we see that. Um, it, in general, you, you, when you're attacking, you don't want to exchange pieces, but if the pieces uh, give black a problem, then, it's a, uh, then it makes, makes a good sense. And the thing is, black cannot take here, because then comes queen b8, checkmate. So, his uh, d6 is, is falling, and a check, and, and this has been a great attacking display. King d8, and here goes the neighborhood, and of course the rest is technique. And uh, what a game by Karpov, uh, just piling up the pressure, keep on pushing, and there was a, there was a knight uh, hanging here, so you had to take with the, with the knight. And this is of course totally winning. Um, but you have to play really well in this position. 
D4, controlling the knight, rook E8, and D4, and here black resigned. Um, th there is there is nothing here. Uh, I think white black can probably play rook uh, white can probably play rook G8 and rook G7. So there is no uh, no reason to continue here. With he's a clear exchange up, and and Karpov will not mess this up. He can always uh, walk with the king uh, from here to here. So uh, there, there will be no checks anywhere uh, where, where <laughs> to, to harass it. And then the, the, the pawn will be picked up. So this was a great display of opening the center with e3, e4. And it's not it's more of an option than a plan. It's not in general, it's not what white sets out to do unless black is is doing a lot of luxury moves like in in some lines they're recently starting to play a6 and h6 and then then it starts to become very tempting to try and blast him away just opening the center get all the pieces out and, and run after his king but of course you do get an isolated queen pawn uh, thank you for watching this uh, gm talks episode uh, the fourth part of uh, the carlsberg pawn structure uh, with the white plans. Uh, later we will get to the black plans, but next time it's getting more exciting because white will castle queenside. Thank you for watching.